I've heard that you want to get to a place where you can learn from anything and everyone as a scholar of life, right? Or as a student of life. So even people whose lifestyles or dispositions or state of mind or whatever that you would prefer not to replicate, you can still learn from them. You can learn what not to do. And I think that that's definitely, you know, one of the keys to life. I want to also say that usually when something doesn't add up, there's a reason for that. When you have, when you ask somebody a question and their story just like, just brings you more questions, there's a reason for that. And I was talking about OGs and, um, you know, I made the generalization that typically age equates to wisdom, which is a generalization, but typically the longer you're here, the more life experiences you gather, the more knowledge or wisdom you should have. But I was uh, listening to, I think it was Blue Pill one day, and he was saying he's, you know, in New York sometimes, and he sees grandmas with periwinkle wigs. Somebody's grandma. You know, and there's nothing wrong with periwinkle wigs, you know, or um, yellow wigs or pink wigs or rainbow wigs or whatever. I had one. I just threw it out. Um, you know, I'm hoping that there's like a homeless person out there who, um, who upgraded their wig. It was cute. You know, it was fun. But... You understand, you know, that um, what, what kind of what he was trying to say. Just because you have lived up to a certain amount of years of life doesn't make you wise or doesn't make you, doesn't prevent you from like wanting to like replicate trends that are set by like young, like young folks or things like that. So I was thinking about this whole OG thing. And I was thinking about the song, you know, where Bob Marley, one of my favorite lines that he says is, everybody has a right to decide their own destiny. And I really love that line. Like everyone really does have a right to decide their own destiny. Your life is really for you to live. And, you know, I'm thinking like about this idea when things just don't add up. You know, like something is up with this story. Something just doesn't add up. Because on the planet, there's a lot of work to do. And I think that we can all agree, like there's a lot of fixing. We all should be busy. We can work on ourselves alone is, you know, until you take your last breath, um, you're, you should be in constant evolution. Like there's a lot of work to do. And then globally, you know, we can talk about all these different things going on with like water filtration crises and like book shortages for teachers. And there's just like so much work, climate control in itself. I mean, you know, economic global disparities, you know, I mean, um, you know, the, 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 there's women are still getting paid less than men. Like there's so many social issues that we could be using our big, beautiful brains for. And so when somebody's like question, you know, why, why are you fixated on another individual? What is your obsession with this other individual? Why are you stalking this other individual? This idea of like, I want to like shape this individual. But why, instead of doing that, like somebody who didn't ask you to intervene in their life in any way, shape or form, why didn't you, if that was the truth, which, which is the reason why people have questions because something doesn't add up. But if that was the truth, let's just say it was, which it's not, why wouldn't you take that energy and go help a child, nurture a child, you know, like, you know, take your, your, your time and your energy into, um, you know, being a mentor, or like, you know, taking, taking your time and your energy into like fixing a global crisis and things like that. I think there's, um, you know, a lot of questions to be asked. And one thing I'll say about OGs, like real OGs, and you know, I'm just using money as an example. I'm really not that 
fixated on money. I'm really like not that materialistic. But I'm using money as an example. I know some people with a lot of it. And I don't really talk about who I know because it doesn't affect me, my lifestyle, or you know the way that I provide for my child. But the people that I know, like the closest ones that, are, that I know that are very monetarily successful, um, worked extraordinarily hard for their money. I mean, extraordinarily hard. You know, one person I know went to several Ivy League schools, had to do like basically like almost genitorial work to pay for books through school, you know, and is now able to really like live his dream because he worked extremely hard, very, very hard. Another person that I know who, the richest guy that I know came from very humble beginnings. His mother, um, he came from, you know, a family where his mother was on po in poverty and um, now is like super duper duper loaded. So a lot of the, the people that I know came from very humble beginnings and really had to work extremely hard for their, their fiscal success. And what does that mean? Well, when I observe the way that they move, when you have to work hard for something, typically, you, you value it a little bit more. So we can even use the idea of like a fitness trainer or somebody who works out a lot. You know, it would be counterproductive to go eat fast food after a really good workout or a run. You know, you know the time and the energy that you put inside of your body. And so you're gonna be not putting foods in it that are gonna make your body have to work even harder to, to um, achieve your goals, right? So the OGs that I know, like the true people that I know that like are really successful, that really grinded and really worked for theirs, they don't do stupid things with their money. And don't get me wrong, you know, I know that there's a lot of people who place bets on fights and things like that. I mean, I guess when you have so much, you can do things like that. But you assume that with age comes wisdom. When you reach a certain level of adulthood that, you'll, that you have some degree of wisdom. And it's like... If you go ahead and you place a bet on somebody and the person doesn't know that you placed a bet on that person and they're just living their life, da 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 and you lose the bet, do you think that it's emotionally mature to be angry at the person? Like a stranger that you placed a financial bet on. You didn't know their backstory. You didn't really know anything about that person. You didn't know... And then, and then you, you place a bet, a monetary bet for your own financial gain. Maybe you wanted to go out of retirement. I don't know what you wanted to do with the money, whatever. But you didn't really know all that much about the person. You place a bet on that person, then you lose the bet. And then you're mad at the person. Like, and it just indicates, you know, like, like a very faulty way of thinking. And if I'm in a position where I have a lot, that's not an individual that I would, you know, um, like invest in. Because I'm like, if I'm somebody who actually, actually had to work for mine or had to be creative for mine, you know, I don't, I'm not gonna be just making frivolous like investments. And that train of thought is so idiotic that I would look at that person as a liability rather than an asset. That I couldn't invest in somebody who would, would, would do something like that. And so when I talk about culture, and I don't want to isolate anybody here because I know that there's people that, that grind of all backgrounds. You know, there's people that work hard for theirs of all backgrounds. But we have to really understand like what, what our culture is and what is not our culture, you know? Um, th these kids like mouthing off to their parents and like being like extraordinarily disrespectful and like, you know, kids like running the household, that's not really our culture. And so when we see like a macrocosm of these things that we're like, this isn't us, you know, like, um, I think that it's time to make a distinction of like what, what we adhere to and what we do not. And I think that a lot of our grief is because we are adhering to things that are not us. 
we are operating in an inorganic fashion and adhering to adhering to things cultures belief systems rituals principles organizations clubs secret societies that are not of us these aren't of these aren't naturally us and so when there's such a resistance to it or you're a part of a club or a secret society or whatever that like shames you more humiliates you more um all of these things even more it's like there's a reason for that you know this isn't really of us and if we say that we're all of these things and we say that we are independent minded and we say that we are you know powerful and things like that then it's time for us to act like that it's time for us to say that we don't have to bow down to your culture your rituals the weird things that you do that's y'all you guys do that weird stuff those rituals and we have rituals but we have rituals that we do that's different that that is not about humiliation degradation you know about rise about power about um being you know orators building strong human beings building human beings who are of um an asset you know to humanity like that's us that's our culture you guys do that weird shit with the dog leashes and the whatever that's that's y'all so when we are adhering to things that are not organic to us not only will we suffer consequences but we will also face larger repercussions peace